Welcome to episode 39, weirdos. Hopefully you're hearing this because I muted my mic all of last game. So incoming for episode 38 will be a director's cut slash DM's cut where I will narrate what's happening in the episode over where I'm supposed to be talking. Uh, but right now it looks like the audio is coming through, so we're good. Uh, so let's get started. We're going to be missing a couple people, maybe with one hopping in later in the show, but let's get started. Uh, yep, I made a note for myself in my notes. I forgot to unmute, unmute myself, so let's double check that right now. That's going to be a triple check. Looks good. Cool. Last time on Adventure Ventures, now in the Feywild, Crispy and Proddy visited the Willow Lings Hot Springs to wash off and relax. Roddy's relaxation was interrupted by his patron's uh, MC, his patron's nervous and agitated telepathic check-in, during which Prady learned that MC had been working with, uh, with unsanctioned people on unsanctioned work. Because of this, MC warned Prady that he may lose his powers if the Averils of Mount Celestia and Sathya found out he was working behind their backs. MC tried to assure Prady that this dire warning wasn't so dire, but he wasn't so successful in that convincing argument. After a night's rest, the shortlist, their new name instead of the big bedfellows, the shortlist le left the village of the Willowlings without Rylos, who wanted to stay longer to learn about his halfling cousins from another plane. With three possible locations where Baba Yaga's iron teeth could be hiding, they decided to visit the realm of the Autumn Court to seek an audience with the Mouse King, King Zipatip. During the day's journey from the Willowing Village, they came across a bear with melting, necrotizing flesh uh, that also had a troll's head sticking out of it, out of its back. Uh, feeling agitated and angry for no reason uh, in particular, Crispy decided to take action and attack the bear with Ashwin following quickly after to back up her adventuring buddy. After a couple rounds of combat, Ostern polymorphed the monstrosity for a few seconds before a hawk fox swooped down and broke the spell like a jerk. Now, a few members of the party wondered if Prady's old arch fay friend who sent them a barrel of violent monkeys a few weeks back had something to do with this bamboozlement. And that's where we left off. Am, am I uh, correct on that? Pretty much. Well, I didn't attack it out of anger. It was more just the, uh, the amped up anxiety of this creepy thing 20 30 feet away from me, mauling some sort of creature. I wouldn't say it was anger driven. Did just I say ang angry? Just emotional. Okay. Yeah. I thought, oh, more anxious. Yeah. I should have just, I, I said <laughs> agitated and angry. I should have just left it at yeah. agitated. More, more just agitated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just for the. Definitely. You got it. Um, so, y'all are uh, in the forest and. Uh, what happened to the bear when it died? Did it like melt? Or I mean, a it's, it's a course? pile of just it melted. Yeah, it melted into. You know, have you seen the thing? The movie? No. Have any of you seen the thing? I don't think so. No. Oh no. my god! That is a travesty, and that is your homework. If all of you do your homework. I will give you inspiration that I had previously gotten rid of. I will give you an exception if you go watch that old movie with Kurt Russell. Um, anyways, there's an alien in there. It turns into a pile of mush. Anyways, it, it looks like that. So, um, Follow-up question. What was it eating? Or oh, what it, does it, it was, look like it was eating? It was digging in the ground for something. Okay, in that case, I'm going to uh, go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to open the eyes on the helm of opened eyes. Okay. 
and take a look quickly at the corpse and where it was digging. How many rounds? Two. So 12 seconds. Yep, make a perception and imagine, check. And I imagine... Doesn't it give me something for perception? Plus five passive perception. You're not oh, seeing just anything. Passive. Okay. Uh, but you have true sight for 12 seconds. I do have true sight, so my active perception roll is uh, 18. Okay. Um, and you're not seeing anything abnormal in the vicinity. Uh, you do take 2d6 psychic damage so eight points of psychic damage uh 1d6 per round right and yeah uh you take it off and uh your head hurts that's a, uh, yeah that's a doozy oh okay what did that look like to the rest of them well, it looked freaky just because the helmet looks freaky. It's got a bunch of eyes on it, and when you put it on, they open up and look around. Uh, and what you saw was was everything just looked more crisp and clear. You could see pulse pulsations in the trees and the plants. What you assume is just them. Feywild, yeah. Well, the Feywild, but also probably the plants that you're you're visualizing them sucking gotcha. in nutrients and such um gotcha. but other than that you didn't see much else uh you guys do see and you during that time you saw like a quick um flash really small flash uh of bluish light and then it's gone and that kind of came back and then was gone again uh austerian you can make a an intelligence check uh if you like sure i rolled a 12. <laughs> and what's your intelligence uh plus zero or plus one so 13. okay Yeah, you, um, there's so many things it could be. So it's not really anything you can nail down with that roll. Uh, Wah. but, uh, yeah, what are you guys going to do? Okay. Um, I suggest we all take uh, a short rest. Uh, it seems that you all look very battered and disgusting. So perhaps uh. we should do that. I, I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> but first, I'm going to slap Crispy with my tail. Uh, make an unarmed attack, I guess. <laughs> Are you trying to do damage? It's just a little bit. I'm a little peeved off. You don't here. have to do damage. It could be just like a, uh, a symbolic the, gesture. The damage is minimal, so yeah, I'm I'm a little salty. Uh, does an 18 hit? Yes. It sure does. <laughs> it's just three damage. All right. <laughs> the familiar Marge. snap that you're used to from practicing with your whip all those years ago, not so much anymore, but that familiar feeling if you look down or to the side now. You see angry, angry Ashwin. Don't do that again. I put my hand up to my face and I'm like, what was that for? It was charging right at us. It was going to kill us. I had to do something. We could have just walked away. It was going to eat us. Did you see that thing? It was crazy. I, it, it, was, it was right there. It was right in front of us. It was right in front of us. It was going to see us and it was going to eat us. I almost I, died because of you. And I just give you a deadpan stare, and I reach into my bag, and I pull out a, sh a, a piece of wood, just a jagged piece of wood from the chest that, from the monkey chest. I'm like, you almost died! You almost died! I still have this! Huh? And I put it back in my bag, staring it's at you. my shame! <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, let's uh, let's, Fine, let's we're even. melted. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's move away from this melted pool and uh, take a rest. <laughs> what does Austerian think about those little interactions right there? He's visually disgusted, but he doesn't say anything. <laughs> you're lucky oh. you're just flying out of reach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure both of them, if they had short bows, could take you out uh, if they wanted, but... Um... Um, I can actually become invisible. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's only so... just I got true sight. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll see you. I got the power of fists. <laughs> uh, so you guys are going to move away and take a short rest? Is that the plan? Yes, that is correct. Yes. yes. So, um, <laughs> do we need to make like a survival check to find a safe spot? One of you does. Would that, would that help? Oh, okay. If you like. Other, you don't have to. You could just like plop down anywhere. Oh, I was going to no. just climb a tree. Climbing trees are nice too. Fine. Peasants. <laughs> so just... I, mean, we, I, I could do a survival check if you want me to do one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hit it. Uh, there's seven. Okay, I'm rolling. Now, I hold have on. a plus five, what and is... I got a seven. Hold on. Uh, Austerian, you can make one if you think he would. Just keep in mind, you don't know that she rolled a seven. Right. I would, I would make one regardless. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We took the 10 minutes for her to find a place that was suitable. We walked over to it. She went, look at this great place. And Austerin went, uh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. It's a pile of leaves. Uh, I rolled an 18. Yeah, you find a... Uh, you spend a good amount of time, you know, flying up to the to the uh, trees and looking around because you know things live in trees. It's not it's just a different type of animal you might encounter or something you might encounter in the trees. Uh, but you find something that you think is offers many escape routes and is sufficiently away from the ground, uh, mm -hmm. about 20 feet up. So, uh, you guys head up there and take a short rest? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're going to roll for an encounter, which means it doesn't have to happen. But uh, you guys can roll, which roll a d10. One of you, decide amongst yourselves who wants to roll a d10. To... I'll do it. I never get to do d10s. There oh. you go. Okay. Five. Five. Okay. You guys spend the next hour kind of recuperating and and uh, tending to wounds as needed, and um, nothing happens. Wonderful. So during a short rest, um, how much HP are you guys down? A bunch. <laughs> okay. A shit ton. Okay. <laughs> well then, um, what uh, what Austerin can do is he can play his song of rest. So that y'all get to, it's not much, but there's a d6 that you can roll um, by spending one of your hit dice to regain those points. And then I can also cast uh, two uses of Goodberry. And uh, each of you will receive 10 berries that heal for, how does this work? Four hit points each. Ten berries? Technically 20 berries, because I'm casting it twice. Uh, okay. Just keep in mind, everyone. Each berry satiates you. I believe I'm using that word correctly. For a whole day. Like, you feel satisfied and full. Uh, so you're going to be feeling extra full if you're eating more. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And so, awesome. that's, a lot, that's a lot of healing right there. 
Yeah, that makes yeah. Goodberry a crazy yeah. healing spell. You're yeah. welcome. I don't. I, I'm gonna have to I look into trust that. that. You're welcome. Aust Austerin, I'm gonna look into that later. Uh, I yeah, looked into so it it's, once before it's... in terms of like just shoving good berries into people's. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's disciple of life for the life player. Oh. That be, it's it's that on top of adding uh, because disciple of life, the creature regains an additional HP equal to two plus the spell's level. It's a feature of the. Of and it's a healing goddess. spell. Of, yes, of Mara. Uh, so, so while you guys are resting, you see that blue flash again, and this time it's in the trees. And right when you start thinking to yourself, Austerian, I think I know what this is. You've seen it in the summer court, used by the various members to uh, send messages. This blue little creature, dark blue skin with lighter blue hair that's wind blown out in a very sharp point, uh, dressed in golds and green uh, armor. Very tiny, like Austerin size. Doesn't have wings though, but it is like... An inferior creature? It is like shaking, uh, not in nervousness, but in like, it's in a constant movement kind of, and you only see it pause, similar to like a hummingbird, you only see it pause for moments at a time. Uh, to you, Austerian, this is a quickling, and uh, it says, Skeet beep beep deep bop 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 bodo. Skeetle up deep da day e i o o dooby dop dop and it goes on like that. And for those of you that don't speak Sylvan, that means this is an official censure from the Summer Court of Queen Titania. Your services are no longer needed. You have basked what? in the light of the summer for long enough. If you are found to be in the lands of summer without sanction, your spring guts will beautify the court of unrest. You are now considered hideous. And what? it goes, thank you. <laughs> Zips away. And, um, yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, um, so Saren is obviously, like, clearly confused. Yeah. As what? he has been... Censured. So he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, he hasn't, he doesn't say anything to the, uh, the other two. What, um, what was that? Did we, but we heard, oh, right. We, we don't understand it. That was insane. Jazz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't know what that said. Um, what was um, that? <laughs> nothing important. <laughs> okay. His, his face is stone cold, but internally he's like, I've been following orders perfectly for mm -hmm. all, for as long as I could remember. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and you see the, the like tiny note left on the branch that the quickling read from. So you may take that if you like. Sure. And, um, yeah, what are you guys, you heading out now after the short rest, or? So, for the note, is it just the, just the, the decree that was made? Uh, yeah, it's just, essentially, the quickling was reading from the note uh you know them to be very their 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 ability to pay attention and stay on task is very limited so many times they carry many pieces of paper to not only deliver they obviously have the messages to read from so because they're not going to remember what they're told to deliver but they have like notes upon notes upon notes of lists of things to do um would as a member of titania's court would he recognize like who wrote who wrote it you would think it's a member of the court i mean it's not like you've seen this done many times uh and it's been for legitimate reasons and it's been for frivolous what you and i would think are just nonsensical yeah. reasons uh 
but each time you kn you think it like it comes from uh, a fae in the court so um, it could be from Queen Titania but it maybe not it could be from um, another high-ranking member but she keeps a pretty t uh, runs a pretty tight ship so it's unlikely that she would not know about it sounds good so heading down the tree i assume you guys are taking off yep onward mm. it's going to keep take... an extra eye out for more of these quicklings because austerin's being super weird about it <laughs> uh... <laughs> and i don't know why yeah you don't know what it what it was unless no you want to make a something check um nope i'm good there's no reason I would. <laughs> yeah, you just saw this weird-looking, very fast creature. Um, yeah. And then the scat jazz, of course. But it is getting towards what would be considered dusk on the material plane. As I described last, last game, the sun and moon both just kind of go between dusk and dawn. And there's really no, especially in this part of the Feywild... There's no high noon. In the summer court grounds, there is, but in this area, it's very dark. So, um, a new challenger approaches. Nice. I made it. Fine. Nice. Uh, welcome. Hello. So, right as you guys are getting ready to climb down from the trees, you see a man with goat hooves, kind of heavy set uh, and horns, a satyr, for those of you in the know, followed by Rylos. Uh, actually, no, you wanted option one. Never mind. Forget the satyr. Option one, the worst option. Okay. Forget the satyr. So roll 2d20. Uh, I did before I entered, and I got... Let me just look at it one more time. It's a terrible number. Uh... <laughs> Don't tell me you rolled like 40. No, I did not. Okay. Uh, it was 9 plus 9, so I got 18, and then plus 8, so it's 26. Okay, and you subtracted that from your hit points? Uh-huh. And what are you at now? Terrible. That's where I'm at. <laughs> so you're below half, right? Oh, absolutely. So Rylos appears breathing heavily, and he's cut... And he may have, like, a vine a vine or stick sticking out of his back. And he's just haggard as fuck. And uh, he's looking around. And it's just like, fuck. Doesn't see you guys. This place is terrible. Who, who would live here? What happened uh, to you? Uh, oh, <laughs> pretty, oh. Much, pretty much from above you. Just... Just Rylos just, just like takes out his rape and it's just <gasps> <laughs> I drop down next to him. Oh bother. <gasps> oh, oh have a, friendly does faces. Do not, not have a good night with the halflings, we we figured we'd give you a little extra time. No, it was it was fine and dandy, then I realized maybe I should catch up. And lo and behold, this entire place is trying to kill or eat me. Oh, yeah, did you pass the huge melters of acid? Yeah, we, we did that. Agreed. Can we leave? Did we find the teeth? Can we leave? No, I did look for it. My hat had eyes on it, but uh, I didn't find anything. So we press on to the autumn court. Glad to have you back with us. <sighs> so it's getting towards the end of this day, and Rylos, you would welcome that greatly. Uh... Oh, yeah. So what do you guys, do you want to continue through the night? Or it'll take you another day and a half to get to the Autumn Court. Uh, so it's not like you can march through the night and get there. But it would definitely speed things up. Would we be taking on exhaustion and such if Absolutely. we press through? Uh, I always say yes. <laughs> Since when? <laughs> <laughs> right i'm all i'm all for pressing on a little bit but uh I'm, i don't look forward to night around here if anybody no. sees a place we can we can bed down and maybe take some shelter that's probably the best idea yeah i 
can yes. ask you. Like, I got a spring in my step after all those berries, so. <laughs> Why are you the berries were delicious. Oh, hey, Rylos, here. And I hand Rylos a handful of uh, good berries because I only no. eat of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not. No, we didn't pick these. These aren't from here. Austerin made them. They're delicious and they, they help a lot with. The... Here, one sec. And I just yank the stick that's out of his back. Here, quick, eat one. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like this? Eat a berry. No, I, to, what are... I start trying to, like, shove a berry in his mouth. <laughs> just eat the birds. <laughs> I guess you uh, like because Rylus is so weak. Just one gets four steps. Like, oh, oh, oh. You do feel and you gain four HP. Yeah, you feel oh, better. <laughs> slightly, more importantly, you feel like very full and satiated, and just like you don't need to eat. Oh, it's not so bad. I know it's it it delicious. It tastes so good. I hold on to a couple others, and I just I give him a couple more. So I hold I'm, on. One's to... fine. I'm full. It you tastes... have three to hold on to for now. Oh, okay. <laughs> it tastes good, if not pretentious, a little bit. <laughs> you can taste the pretentious on it. <laughs> it's just the nature Wait, of spellcasting. Did you not eat all of them? No, I just ate a couple. They were very filling. I wanted to stay, you know, nimble. Well, the rest did me wonders. I mean, I feel okay. great now. That's all, that's all I need. I would eat them within the day, though. Because oh, they don't disappear. worry. They disappear after the next day, so. Oh, I, well, once they've settled on, I'll leave them another one. So, um, I, I did use, like, half my hit die. <laughs> okay. And remember... I did, I did other healing. Uh, reminder for... Those of you who need it, the short rest, you can use hit die, which you should have a number of them equal to your level, so eight. And you can use those to regain hit points. You can choose to roll a, as many as you like in one short rest to regain hit points. And you regain half of your hit die on a long rest unless there's some other circumstance that makes it not so much or more than that because there are some abilities if i recall that allowed more and conditions that prevent it so are you guys going to stay in this tree for the long rest are you going to walk you got an hour or two before Feywild. yeah no night. we're going to pre we're going to press on and find some real shelter okay uh heading forward make a survival check Oh, Staren. Uh, me? Yes. Survival attack? Yes, please. Okay. This time, I only roll a 13. Yeah, uh, if you're looking for another... The trees are starting to thin out here. If you're looking for another well-limbed tree canopy... Uh, it's going to be difficult to find, but you do find it's getting more hilly and such, so you can find a, a, uh, burrow, if you like, which I'm sure Ashwin... I was like, that sounds fine. Yeah. Would you I mean, like... we're all short, we can fit, right? Just going to hop well, in? I mean, do you well, guys want a better, better spot? Well, we, we should make sure there's nothing here. Is it like a shallow burrow, or is it like dark, deep enough to be dark inside? Oh, it's not like an uh, indent, an indented part of the forest floor or anything. It's like an actual. It gets dark. You can't see how far it goes in. Gotcha. Oh, well, we should make sure that uh, there's Wait, something is, else has not cleaned anyone, this uh, as a home. Is anyone trained in survival? Because I can cast guidance, and that might give a better roll than a little bit. I have proficiency oh. in it. That one, oh, yeah. Have, have yeah. that one do it. Uh, so I pat the mouse on the head, and then you get a, an additional D four to your roll. Okay. Die 
Guys, don't fail me now. Famous last words. The, um, hmm. Hmm. Twelve. Okay, that was not higher than a thirteen. So. You added the. This, yeah. Okay. Uh. Well, are you going in the wait, hole? Wait, wait, hold on. I didn't add. I didn't add everything. Okay. Seventeen. My bad. There you go. There we go. That's better. much better. So this is for checking the hole, correct? Yes. Or are you looking for another? Oh. I thought I was checking the hole. This okay. seems good. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll just use that as investigation also. So, Ashwin, I'm sure you still have, like, good berry coloration on your mouse mouth. Probably. I should just went. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you hop down and you momentarily forget that you have weapons strapped to you, and so they get caught on the lip of the burrow and you head in there and it's about 20 feet in there and narrow and then it opens up to a little uh, five by five foot circular room with no other offshoot tunnels or anything and nobody's in there and uh with that survival check, you think it's been abandoned for a while. Like, it's not... Uh, there's no evidence that something has been there. Perfect. All clear! Sweet. A star and wrinkles his nose and down. hovers down. All right, you guys head Rose. in. Yep. You guys Just dives. In. Dives, fair enough. Doesn't want to be outside anymore. You guys head in, and are you guys taking watches or anything yes. like that? Sure, I'll take the first watch. Okay. I'm going to kick back, open my book of Zermithan, read it for a bit before sleeping. Okay. Uh, you have I... a book on you? Zerthimen. Book of Zerthimen. Which one did you read? He... The, the gift gave me this. Yeah, the gift. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the I don't know, Bible or something. Uh, I'm it's supposed to read religion. it. It's, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of history. It's a lot of prose. It's really boring, but latitudes. You saw, you saw what they could do. So I'll read it. <laughs> so, fun. so as you've been reading it, crispy. For most of the beginning chapters it's just been platitudes and they have affected you in the same way they would affect most people in real life the the uh effect of a platitude is that it's you know cliche and overused and most people just ignore it or they're they just stop listening and as you've been reading it you start to feel that and, and it's been more of the same and some of the platitudes and the messages in the platitudes have been restated in different ways whatever something's changed you don't know but you're starting to like <clears throat> understand or feel maybe it's like an actual re physical response but you're starting to like it's not they're not bouncing off of you as they were before if that makes sense okay uh so ashwin's taking the first watch anyone taking anything else a long I'll, rest. I'll, I'll, I'll take the one after ashwin okay i'll take middle watch so we got three hours each or are you guys gonna Yeah, I mean, if that's, that's. I guess it's just you and me switching off the watch. Well, and the halfling, take the halfling with you. I have a name. Um, look at him. He's, he needs to sleep. He needs to sleep. Let me. Please I don't, just let got, sleep. I don't think you got much rest last night. You should probably sleep. Just, 
Just one night, please. <laughs> Are there Fine, any bite marks on you, Rylos? Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably just, like, just scratches, bite marks, maybe, like, a dart in the neck that I still, like, a <laughs> tiny, like... It just hasn't quite set in as a sedative because he's just so tweaked out just from running. <laughs> just adrenaline pumping. God, uh, just let me see. Oh, oh. <laughs> it just falls asleep. So, so six hours is covered for Ashwin and Brian. Uh, I'm just going to mix your real names and your character names. For Ashwin and Brian to get the benefits of a long rest, uh, it'll be about midday when you guys start up again okay right. and the back end of the long rest will not be covered unless somebody speaks up yeah i'll watch the last okay uh perception check ashwin maybe oh Eight. Okay. I found my good die and they're mad at me. Well, that's what you left them in the car. Did you learn your lesson? Did you I apologize will. to them? Also no. that. Well, I look forward to seeing that relationship develop. So, Ashwin, during your watch, you hear thoom, thoom. Boom. Shaking the, the ground above you and the cave walls. There's roots and stuff crisscrossing through the dirt. So that helps it stay together and prevent collapsing. And there's it's rocky soil. But uh, it gets closer and then goes away after a little while. Um, but other than that, nothing else happens. By the way, what do you guys, do you guys talk or do you guys all just hit the sack? Well, oh, Rylos is just yeah, de Rylos. like essentially dead. Yeah, Ostarin is not in the mood to talk, so he pulls out his luxurious like sleeping set from his bag of holding and okay. just sleeps. And uh, not... I read. Yeah. So, yeah. No. Is Bur Oster sleeping on the floor? No, he has a luxurious leg like, bed set in his bag of holding. <laughs> like a, a little um, loading cot. Like a like a cot, like you don't have like a, a pixie king size bed. Uh, it's it's like nice still, but just it's fancy. Yeah, for sure. It's made of uh, whatever you want. I just see I see you pulling out things in the bag of holding. And it's like Sky Mall, just all these like little trinkets to make it more comfortable. <laughs> That's, there should be a fantasy version of Sky Mall. Um, maybe I'll make that. We can make that happen. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, we can make that happen. Yeah. Um, when traveling between planes, please look at our catalog. There is a there is a catalog, like a Sears-type catalog in D&D since, like, second edition. Forgetting the is name there, of it Is now. it, like, the, the Sears catalog? No, it's it's not. <laughs> oh. That would be fantastic. It's, it's some... Uh, wizard started a business and you can actually like send out for things and it will be delivered to you in a certain amount of time uh yeah so crispy roll a perception check if you want i align my chi while i'm doing this to give myself guidance not 20 for a 23 nice you hear just the sounds of the forest the most interesting sound you hear is just some mm, whaleish type noise like chewbacca is that mm. you uh no it's it's less of the the roar and more of just that type of mm, type of noise <laughs> uh but other than that you're not alarmed by anything you perceive Cool. And you're... I try to hunt myself a, a small fey squirrel or fey rabbit. Oh, you go outside? 
<gasps> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm keeping watch just, just like outside the entrance of the burrow. <laughs> like he's like everyone. A... Yeah, so I'm definitely outside. I'm not sitting in the burrow. He's definitely like watch. a trapdoor spider, just like sitting there with his whip, just like. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> if this, if this hmm? were real life, someone might pray... say to Crispy, "You're taking, a, you're being, you're taking a lot of risks." lately are you okay crispy <laughs> no I'm, I'm keeping watch i'm watching the entrance i can't um, see anything inside can't see anything coming so yeah outside you see far with that roll since i didn't know you were going outside in the distance you think you can make it out you see trees moving and walking two of them um, okay one of them the moonlight lights up a willow-like tree, just a massive spread of branches and leaves and vines that hang down. And it kind of creates a cool effect with the moonlight shining through it and it moving. Um, and you're trying to catch a game? Is yeah. That well, not no, not once I see those things. Okay. <laughs> if I see those things, then I'm gonna just sneak a little closer, just to just to watch. I have, I have no intention of of attracting their attention if I can avoid it. Stealth. Um, oh sure. It's uh twenty two. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> that could literally mean either extreme. It could. Uh, let me pull up these stats real quick. Sure. What was your stealth roll? 22. Okay. Uh, the willow treant, uh, they seem to be having... A conversation and do you speak you don't speak um druidic right um no they sure don't uh they seem to be having a conversation and they're walking together and the other one the the willow one doesn't isn't noticing you but the one next to it is more tree beardish from okay. lord of the rings um, yep. Lacking, l lacking by a great degree, the amount of branches that the other one has, but it's much taller. It's probably thirty-five feet tall. The willow treant is twenty feet tall, much wider. Um, so the tree beard like treant stops and says something and looks around, and it starts panning and panning and then it, behind the tree <laughs> it stops and you you don't you're not sure if it's looking at you cuz you're trying to remain still right but it's just staring at you and the other one kind of you think it was still talking it's a weird language they're speaking especially with their vocal inflections it's super low uh, tones whale like and uh, mm -hmm. it pauses there for probably a good 10 seconds do you do anything um after a couple seconds of waiting i'm pretty sure am i still feeling the effects of the days before the, of, of the the fey wild emotional effect oh yeah okay then uh after a few seconds of remaining still i, I pop up and i just go oh a mighty fine night we're having here it's beautiful branches okay bye and i just turn around and bolt back to the hole like full <laughs> dash bonus action dash when you gone. start making <laughs> making noise are you are you using any of your key uh to go faster um i what is that let me check one goblin uh, feature real quick because a goblin lets me do some of the bonus action stuffs but i think it might just be high what if like while you're in hide so yes to bonus action dash i have to step of the wind a couple okay. times okay 
Uh, so mark that off. Um, okay. What if, like, how cool would it be if Crispy, like, came back the next morning and was, like, piloting a treant? <laughs> <laughs> like, just, like, <laughs> just, 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 that would be so cool. Anyways, uh, that doesn't happen, uh, which is <laughs> not truly unfortunate. Truly unfortunate. <laughs> I don't know why I brought it up. I just had that thought. There's another side to that coin that I really don't want to take a chance on. <laughs> the squashed part? To make you into the like a tiny part. goblin coin? Being squashed by two living trees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so when you start making noise, the forest just... The sounds, the baseline sound of the forest at dusk in the Feywild, dusk tonight... Uh, the sounds just erupt, and it's all kinds of sounds. Some of it familiar, some of it not. But the tree ant who is staring at you, as soon as you take off, just turns around when you're looking back as you're sprinting, and is just turning back around and continuing on its way. Uh, you Good. presume that it's Good. not chasing you to stomp you into Goblin Jam. It's a good thing. But uh, you make it back to the burrow. And any of you that have... Yeah, I would say Rylos, if you're... You might not... I'm going to dock your passive perception for this sleep. I feel like you would just be... Not only from any darts that may, may be in your neck, but you would probably, like, anything that woke you up, you'd probably just, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm go staying asleep. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> kind of like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly like that. So, Brian, you head back in. Nothing happened. Violent. Things happened. But, uh, Austerian, it's your watch. Make a perception check. Are you staying in the burrow? I am definitely staying in the burrow. Which is what I recommend to you as we cross, as I wake you up to take your watch. Don't go outside. I don't. Mm, you probably know. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not going to sleep. Asterin rolls his eyes as he takes off his sleeping mask and then like cusses like <laughs> cusses cusses the goblin out in like Sylvan and like hovers. Yeah, Asterin. <laughs> just the end just just my <laughs> I'm like, that's a fun um, melody. I'm going to go to sleep thinking about that melody. What melody is he singing? <laughs> like, what were the curse words you said to him? Right. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so uh, he has guidance on himself, and his total role for perception is a 25. Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, the night passes without issue. Um, nothing happens. My dice seem to hate me today as well. So, lucky for you guys. You wake up fully healed, fully rested. In what you presume is morning. It doesn't look like any morning on the material, but um, it's a beautiful sight with vibrant colors and a mixture of moonlight and dawnlight. So, uh, you guys eat good berries and head on your way? Yep. Yep. Cool. To the autumn court we go. God, why are they good berries? <laughs> All right, got that. So, continuing on your way for the day, someone make a d10 roll for random encounters. Rylos. 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 D10, you say? That's a nine. Okay. I will allow you, because I forgot to ask you. 
Are you guys going stealth travel, or are you traveling at a normal pace, fast pace? Is there anything that you would like to do to make your travel more inconspicuous? I feel I mean, like I'm fast following pace. Our, we have a guide, so I'm following our, our guide, Touché. whether he feels like Most we should be stealthing say. or... Um, I can you cast, out there. I can cast guidance <laughs> on whoever has the highest stealth check. That's not going <laughs> to apply to hours of travel. That's going to work for... And since it's guidance, which is a cantrip, um, it's going to work for six seconds, the added boost. Okay. Um, I mean... I feel like Osterin would know the safest way to the fall court. Oh, yeah, you definitely, um, I'm taking that into account for sure. Um, I was just want to give you guys a chance, uh, you know, I don't want to shortchange <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> uh, you know, you might, I don't know if there's a spell or something that, like, I don't know. So I'm just giving you a chance. It's not, I'm not intimating something's going to happen or anything, so... Uh, yeah, so a nine, Rylos, you travel for the first 12 hours without a problem, um, but I need another encounter roll for y'all. Okay. Should I just take it again? D10, someone roll. Go. Go for it. Going! That's a five. Okay. Uh, let me roll a couple things. Oh no. I've doomed us all. Oh well. Oh. We'll be fine. That's a, that's famous last words. <laughs> did the, did the long rest cure my emotional state? <laughs> um yeah, we, we do need to roll for that. A necrotic bear. So All right, everyone except Austerin, roll a a D one hundred. Get out that other. Ooh, that's fun. One. Ninety-eight. Oh. Two ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Thirty-six. Should have rolled a fifty. It would have been better. I wonder which Sorry. one of you. So you, both of you guys know something's gonna happen. Some, which some oh, happen absolutely. Someone. Which which one of you is it gonna be? Uh, as you're starting that that travel there, crispy. Damn it! You are starting <laughs> to <laughs> to lose it. It's it's yesterday all over again times ten, and you are getting angry like you have seldom been before in your life and then switching to happiness maybe just like complete uh just not happiness but um just kind of giving up on your situation you're bursting into despair. crying laughing fits and then you're generally overcome by despair and it's happening like Every 10 minutes or so, you're, like, switching these emotions, and you're getting exhausted pretty quick doing this. Um, what do you guys... Are you guys... <laughs> like, he's, he's, he's even, like, going off by himself to cry at times. Um, he's muttering to himself. Hey, hey, bud, are you, are you okay over there? This I'm not okay. Look where we are. This place is fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy, man. I can't do it anymore. We should go, though. Let's go. I bet the autumn court is really pretty, don't you think? I bet it is. Keep zip it cheap. I mean, come on. Listen to the king's name. It's fabulous. Let's go. Hey. Is he normally like this? Or is this start just skipping? No, uh, <laughs> I think we should, like, take his weapons and tie him up. He could he danger it. I could turn like him into a toad. Sure. Why, why are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no to the toad thing? Okay. Well. I, I said go for it. 
So I skip to the front of the group. Yeah, he's ahead of you guys now. Arm. Like, he's okay, skipping well, ahead. Oh, he's gone. We, no, we need to stop this. He's the reason why we almost died last time, guys. Oh, good. Do, 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 do. Don't, let him, don't let the carnivorous flowers find him. I'll, I'll stare. Do something. Over the hills and through what? the woods, the grandmother's house will go. Your grandmother's not on this plane. Now I'm singing loudly. Oh, Are we going on. with the toad thing then? <laughs> yes. Do something. Okay, I cast polymorph on the goblin. What does he need to do? <laughs> Uh, yeah, what's the save? 15 for wisdom. I got a 15. Oh, That's a save. Oh. Damn it. You feel someone cast something on you, and you're pretty damn pissed off that someone yep, would... I, I start, I, I whip out my flail in one hand and my whip in the other, and I start looking around. I look back at the group, and Hi. there's currently rage in my eyes. You guys see, you guys see, rage like you haven't seen before. How do they? Um, can I roll me... an arcana, an arcana check? Yeah. And I assume or I don't. What know are you trying sort... to? I guess to see if he what, what sort of if he's under some sort of magical effect or not. Okay. Yeah. Make your roll. Uh, I roll a sixteen. Some people who are not from the Feywild are affected by this way by the nature of the Feywild. So, and it doesn't, the longer they're in it, the more susceptible they are to these types of effects. If a squirrel comes within 10 feet of me right now, it's getting whipped. Oh yeah, you, that's you, very whip, rude. you whip the head off a squirrel. Like, Ooh. nothing. I'm not even going to make you roll for it. You're so amped up. Squeak? That's terrible. Well, I cast a spell on me. This place is treacherous. Watch your back. And I turn back around, and now I'm, like, stalking with both of my weapons <laughs> out. Like, I'm not skipping anymore. I'm, like, tiptoeing. Excellent. What are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to... I I'm mean, gonna go out he... of his range and just kind of like going... keep following. Prodi's gonna is he try going... to. Prodi's gonna try to polymorph you. I'm like, we need to disarm oh. this guy. Is is he going the right way at least? Uh, he's going <laughs> in the direction you were you were heading, but you know that that's not going to the. You're navigating the forest, so. There's no way in hell he's going to continue to go in the right direction. <laughs> like, there's no chance. Um, I got a mod 20 versus uh, Prodi's polymorph. And the next time I come into view of you guys, because I'm staying ahead of you, uh, I'm taking point, which I make it very clear to you guys. I'll take point! Um, at one, <laughs> The next time you see me, I'm, I'm squatting next to a bush with my tinderbox trying to light a fire. Uh, the plants are casting spells! The plants are doing something to me! And then all of a sudden, Crispy, like, you feel really sad that people are casting spells at you that you can't see, and you're just overwhelmed with sadness that someone thinks that it's their, they can do that to you. Like, they don't even know you, they've not even, they don't know your character, they don't know what you're like. I also am not successful in starting a forest fire. Uh, <laughs> so then the next walk I'm doing is uh, I fall back. If you guys are moving at a normal pace, I fall then to the middle of the group. And if you allow it, behind the group, doing like the the Charlie Brown walk. <laughs> or no, okay. Arrested yes. Development. Yes. Do, do, do. <laughs> okay. This is your chance, guys. We should probably tie him up. What? What's with you and tying people up? Is it gonna be a bad? All right, give me. You. So How I'm gonna. How else would you do it? He's a danger to us. You're feeling especially weirded out by her wanting to tie people up, especially after your time with the Willowlings. Like they were of the same mindset, so it's just weird. That's all. Are you tying well... them up? Can you, are you, are you good at it? Me? Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, I got rope. I can do it, but like... Checking... I don't think I am. Crispy, you're still, like, feeling these swings of emotion. You still have the desire to stay with the group, but you're just... Mm -hmm. You're... 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 Oh, yeah. Having a hard time keeping it together. Yep. Um... Definitely staying with the group. I'm just now... I'm hanging at the back of the group because I'm super sad. Sure. So this will... <laughs> if you guys don't do anything... He will stay with you guys, and your travel will be slowed to a slow pace. So, um, uh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Um, can I try casting calm emotion? You certainly can. What does that do? Uh, you attempt to suppress strong emotions in a group of people or a humanoid in a twenty-foot radius sphere. You must choose within range. Must make a charisma saving throw. A creature can choose to fail if they wish. You can suppress any effect causing a target to be charmed or frightened. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a um, charisma save, right? Charisma save 15. My charisma save is a minus one, which gives me a 17. I am saving against these like crazy. <laughs> oh my that was, gosh. That was a... That was a brilliant idea to use call motions, and yeah, no, I am determined to be a crazy goblin. I cast goblin it at the again. <laughs> Make I sure cast you mark... it again. Okay. Make sure you're marking off these spell slots there, Otsdaren. Uh, just yes, I am. To keep track. Uh, there we go. I failed six. Okay. There we go. So yeah, you feel. I do go on another spree of trying to find what's casting spells on me, and killing small wooden creatures and or plant. As soon as he cast it, though, you... It hits you that... You know, you're kind of... You gotta keep it together. If something terrible is gonna happen to you or one of your compatriots if you keep acting this way, and... Likely, it's probably one of your group trying to help you that they're casting spells on you, and you regain your control Hooray. of your emotions. So, um... You're welcome. Cool. Two... What is that, a second level? <sighs> yes, two second level down. <laughs> well, to those, to those are much better days. Let's, let's see what the world has in store for us, shall we? Also... Gotta... Gotta... All smiles now. You guys are good right now as far as the forest, the Torwick Forest opinion of you. Uh, but you do notice it's after the bear encounter. The forest felt more claustrophobic. And... Some of you may choose to ignore that as a figment of your imagination. Uh, Austerin, you're sure that you know what's going on. But it's not a big switch. It's just like... Almost like the Force is like, I'm going to keep an eye on you guys. Something about you guys is not right. We're making too much noise and the Force is starting to notice. Uh, but that original encounter roll... Um, because I immediately I interrupted that uh, once I remembered the once I was prompted by Brian. Mm -hmm. Um, the original encounter roll in your travels that day, you come across uh those two tree ants, crispy, that you recognize, but they're in a clearing now and a, a well manicured clearing, and they're on opposite sides, about a hundred feet apart. And they're moving these stumps in uh, straight lines and putting them down and uh, alternating turns doing that. And they're making some of those noises. And Austerin, you hear them saying uh, in... in uh... Actually, do you speak Druidic? No, you don't speak Druidic. I do not. Uh, never mind. Uh, you hear whale noises like everyone else. Um, <laughs> but they're not paying any attention. Do you guys stealth by them or not or what? 
Oh, hey, you guys. I, I met these guys last night. I mean, met is probably a strong word. But I said hi to them and wished them a good night. Um, and then I ran away because it's nighttime and it was scary. But uh, do I want to talk to them? They're, I mean, moving trees. That's fascinating to me, at least. I, I After yesterday with the bear, if you guys want to move on, I'm not going to shoot them with a bow, I promise. I'll try my hardest not to shoot them in the back with a bow. Where I come from, trees stay still. They shouldn't move. So uh, I'm going to say no to this adventure. These treants are wise beings, you simpletons. We must move along. So we agree. <laughs> okay. Except, except uh, the agreement was coupled with an insult. So <laughs> Yes, yes. Of course. Oh. I think the wise ones wouldn't eat us or smash us out, right? But sure, if you say so, you're the guide. And we will sneak by, or at least I will. So you have, it, it comes to nighttime again, and someone make a survivor survival roll to find a safe spot again. Guidance! Guidance on whoever <laughs> does it. Whoever does the roll. Ashwin, you found a good burrow last night. Oh, Let's try okay. Again. Mm. 24. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking for? Um, Anything in particular or just safety? A nice, safe spot. It could be in a tree. It could be down below. Yeah, you know what? In a tree. Okay. Gotta you, change it up. Yeah, you find a a spot where a bunch of fallen trees have come together and fallen, so they're all supporting each other, almost like a uh, a teepee top. Um, and at the top of it, there's these tree, trees are still alive. At the top of it, the branches are forming a a structure or a roofed area that you can easily use for the night and you're positive nothing has been in there in a while and you're safe from most ground dwelling beings i need a watch order and yeah. take metal again corresponding perception checks oh shit uh, I guess I'll go first. Y'all let me sleep in after all. Well, I think Ashwin's going first. It looks like you pulled a uh, last watch. You, oh. you got the you got the dawn. Yeah, uh, I got an eighteen. Okay. Yep. Watch passes without much. Uh, it, without anything happen happening, crispy. It's your turn. Hmm. Not as good this night. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Maybe I'll just stop using that die. Okay, you got another. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> you're nothing happens. Uh, third watch. Use that die more. Uh, am I doing the third watch? No, I think Rylos. Or who's doing it? Rylos. Is the third watch the last watch? Yeah. Then it's me, yeah. Okay, guidance for Rylos. So you're waking up to guidance him? Uh, I, I guidance him on the way. There you as go. We, as I wake him up. I wake you up by poking your body in several places. I'm like, wait a minute, that's better. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> and then you feel this energy inside of you rush forward and you can see better. <laughs> okay. So try this out. That's an eight. Plus two plus eight is eighteen. Okay. And your watch passes without any eventful happenings. So taking a long rest, successful? Successful. Okay. I need D one hundreds for those of you non native to the Feywild. Here we go. <laughs> 
51. Austerin's I don't just... think anything's going to happen to me, guys. Austerin's just randomly, menacingly laughing. <laughs> oh, that's a 14. Okay. All right, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, what happens when I hit the, I think it's the 100 on the so, D100? Zero, zero. Zero. Yeah. So you rolled a zero, zero, and then what'd you roll on the other one? A five. So, so you got five. Five, five. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Crispy, you feel like your emotions are, what'd you roll again? 51. Yeah. Your emotions are nowhere near where they were yesterday, but they're not as zen-like like you're used to on the material as they were after Austerian cast that spell on you. So you're still a little amped up, but you're able to keep, like, you don't act on them. You are you think better okay. of any, any urges. Uh, other than that, everyone else is fine. And... You spend the day. I need an encounter roll. One last encounter roll. D10. I'll stare, and I think it's you this time. Alrighty. I can roll a nine. Okay. And that's what dooms us. Uh, no, you guys have <laughs> rolled a nine, I think, on one of these before. You're fine. I did. Uh, nothing wow. happens. And we you did make too it, well. You make it to... The forest grows... More, more thickly as you're nearing the area and the leaves turn orange just more orange and yellow and brown and they seem to be perpetually losing their leaves uh so there's kind of like a constant fall of of uh various types of foliage it's a beautiful beautiful sight uh and as you're getting closer, Austere, and you realize this, you're definitely in the the autumn, the realm of the autumn court, uh, and you can head over to, you know, you're on the from the direction you're coming into the realm, you're going to run into the Mouse King's area, uh, which is Baba Yaga told you. Baba Yaga told you. What did she tell you? That he is an amazing person. Oh, yeah. King, the king keeps uh, an eye on what's going on. And he'll know if the Iron Teeth have been back to the Crow's Nest. Uh, so that's on your way in further to the Autumn Court and the court of the pumpkin king so you can go to king zipatip's area or you can head straight to the court of the pumpkin king where do you lead them do you say any of this yada 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 um sure i do let them know that we're approaching the mouse king's territory which direction to the mouse king yes I think we have a mouse that needs to see her king. I don't I, I don't have a king, but I'd like to see another mouse. It's been a while. Very well. This way. Fools. <laughs> um, so what do you do, Ashwin? Uh he he tells you where to go. Do you say that? I'm no, I'm bolting straight that way. Okay. Uh, for for whatever pause she's going. 40 feet, dash, oh, all that. We're running, Han. I'm just jogging next to you. <laughs> <laughs> mm, whatever. I saunter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not running. It's hard I've been to running keep, for too long. It's hard to keep up, Austerin, with uh, these two. Because both of you... Ashwin, you have... 40 feet movement or no? No, I have 30. Oh, never mind. Oh, uh, take that back. 25 is my walking speed. What? I thought Come champions. Come out. Yep. Anyways, so you guys head in the direction and pretty quickly, like less than 20 minutes, you come to a clearing uh, where the trees thin out and you see a massive four-story gourd, white gourd with 
over overgrowth sticking out of it of other gourds that are orange and red and green uh, but the main gourd that's four stories tall is white and there are various mice on on um what's the word i'm looking for it's not stanchions but uh like watchtowers uh outside of it and as you're entering they take you know positions like who are these fools and they call out to you guys like halt you're entering the realm of king zipa cheap uh, I'm going to say at this point, Ashwin stops running. Her eyes probably get like super big. They look like the anime eyes. They probably have like <laughs> sparkles in them. And she's like, this is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Do she's you, just in uh, full awe. And you stop, right? Oh, yeah. She okay. like dead stops the minute she sees all of it. I'm going to start in the like, Ashwin, you might want to say something to the guards before they fill us full of arrows. And the various guards are saying <laughs> like that <matching> you. <laughs> message in Sylvan, and they're saying it uh, <laughs> in Common, and they're saying it in Squeak Squeak. And... Quick, squeak at them! <laughs> Squeaker, squeak, 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 squeak it. And what does that mean? Uh... We mean no harm. We are sent here by Baba Yaga looking for teeth. Stay right there. We'll be right back. And we will see if the king will grant you an audience. And one of them expertly dives down the tower and takes off towards the, towards the white massive gourd. And comes back a few minutes later and uh, squeaks up to his compatriots and says, uh, Ashwin, you're getting this. He's like, the king is very excited to see them. Uh, and uh, then he turns back to you guys and says, the king has granted you an audience and would love to see you. And as can, you I guys... roll an, um, can I roll an insight check on that? Yes. I roll a 19 plus 4. 23. Okay. Uh, yeah, you think it's genuine? Um, like, you, uh, is there anything specific you'd like to know? No, just so I was wondering if they weren't leading us down into a trap or something like that. Oh, that's us all. mice don't lie. Oh, that wouldn't your, your insight wouldn't tell you if it, they're like, leading you to a trap. It would tell you like whether well, they have nefarious, or not. yeah, whether yeah, they mean you lying. harm and stuff yeah. like that. You don't think they do. Uh, you think okay. everything's on the up and up. And as as y'all are heading in, guided by this mouse who introduces himself as the king's son, Zeep Zeep. Uh, he asks y'all your names, and you hear a a loud uh, horn blast, which, as you look around, you see all the other mice who are working, and some of them are, are hauling in stuff they foraged from around the forest. They When they hear this horn blast, they kind of stop a moment, and then they all start making their way into the to the uh, Gord Castle. And uh, you are led into the main hall of the castle, and it is not dirt, but manicured uh, sawdust ground. And there are wood pillars going all the way up three stories to the uh, top of the gourd and there are viewing sections around the gourd and there is a uh, part of the gourd has been carved out to create stairs up into a throne and um, yeah there's a bunch of mice there and the king is sitting on his throne he's wearing uh, some sort of foliage that You've seen similar stuff in your journeys here, 
over the last few days. Uh, it's, it's foliage that changes color and um, it's a beautiful sight. And this king stands up when you guys enter and is greets you with a hearty laugh and says, Welcome to the realm of King Zipatip. I am the ruler of this realm. What is your business here? So uh, when we get close to him, I immediately do this overly done bow of like, Oh, you're, you're mousy. <laughs> like, very awkwardly. And he goes, he starts laughing. <laughs> oh, where are you from, young mouse? Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Ashwin. I'm from the Nivermore Forest. Uh, it's not on this plane, but yeah. Yes, we've heard stories of mouse folk who journeyed from here to the material... I believe I, we have records that they, uh, one group settled in the Nivermorn. Oh, so you're from the material. This is great. We haven't heard from a fellow mouse folk from the material in, well, I don't know what it is in material years, but it's been quite a many cycles. If I do, do say so myself, tell me, young Ashwin, please... What are your greatest deeds from your life journal? And make a history check, Ashwin. Oh, boy. Seventeen. Okay, yeah. Uh, when you were growing up, you heard elders of your town uh, talk about life journals and apparently it was something that in the past mouse folk every single mouse folk would keep life journals of their greatest deeds uh just essentially keeping record of that and uh you heard elders talking about reinstituting that and when you were a kid and you heard this it just sounded like a lot of work and very tedious but um yeah, it's just a very old-fashioned thing. And he says, Please, share from your life journal. Oh, uh, uh about that. Um, uh, that, that, that's kind of old school. We don't do that that much anymore. And then, work. Say that last part, you broke up. It just seems like a lot of work. A lot of work? How do you remember what you've done? Um... With my noggin, like, so today we got up and we didn't die. So I feel like that's a pretty big accomplishment. That's your biggest accomplishment? <laughs> and the whole court starts laughing, chortling. And the mm -hmm. king says, is that your biggest accomplishment? You say you can remember. Surely you can think of something better than that. Should help uh... bring down a mountain range. So there's that. I don't know. That's, that's, this is fine. And who are you, young goblin? We don't have oh. goblin here very often. Neither do I. Hello, my name is Crispin <laughs> Oakenshaft. I'm nearly a goblin, only about, oh, seven days or so. Uh, Still did, getting used to it myself. Did the Summer Queen or Morgan turn you into a goblin? Uh, no, it was a very tiny owl. Uh, this was back on the material plane. Seems like something that would, should happen here, huh? Nope, totally normal on the material plane. Used to be a human, now I'm a goblin. Interesting. Uh, well, while we're at it, why don't the rest of you introduce yourselves? Uh, you, young halfling? Oh, you called me young. Uh, <laughs> I'm Rylos. I just joined up with these folk. Not much to say beyond that. Okay. Uh, how about you? You look familiar. Oh, do I? People say that all the time. Your Grace. I, I have no idea who this guy is. Wh a star in Whisper Wings. Attendant is Queen Titania. Your Majesty. And he 
turns to one of his attendants and whispers something to them. Let me look at passive perceptions real quick. Yeah, you don't hear anything. Uh, Dang it. And uh, the king says, All right, well, thank you for introducing yourself. Uh, you will abide by our rules here while you are here. And uh, you will be shown the utmost hospitality. Uh, young Ashwin, since you do not have a life journal, and you are unwilling to speak of your greatest deeds, and I see those weapons on your back, and those, my attendant tells me, especially one of them, is quite, quite rare. I wonder. Yes? How would you like to participate in a friendly duel between my greatest warrior and yourself? Can I get uh, your least greatest warrior? <laughs> You should not uh, refuse his majesty, Mouse. It's not refusing, it's just, you know, changing up the terms of agreements here. Come on, you guys got to watch me get the shit kicked out of me. Go ahead. <laughs> Go for the duel. You can do it, Ash. Okay, okay, how about, like, your, your medium f fighter? Not like the worst and not your best. Your average give her, give her the strongest one, your majesty. I am not up to date with material, plain humor. I assume this is humor. And if you're truly scared, believe me, there will be no death here today. It will just be all a sporting event. Come on, it's barbecue time. Come on. What's the worst that could happen? Do you, are you not worthy of holding that mighty fine, mighty fine flaming weapon you carry on your back? Uh, probably not, since someone oh, just gave it, it to me. No, no, it's okay. It's still sure mine, that? though. Do I get to keep it if I challenge the greatest warrior? It's mine. Prove it. Don't make me tail it slap you. You can tail slap the champion, you can just tail slap me, you can't tail slap the champion. Yeah, okay, guys, there's like things I didn't tell you about my uh, my previous life, so like, I I mean, I, do, do I have to? The king, the king, while you're, you guys are talking and debating, the king calls, Burrowface, step forward. And this m tall mouse folk with large patches of its fur missing steps forward and it's missing a chunk of its lip and so you can see part of its tooth and Burrowface says yes your majesty and the king says there will be no death here today Burrowface if you fight this material plain mouse folk for fun am i not correct and Burrowface says of course not your majesty i have not killed any of the participants in our sporting duels yet and i do not plan to disobey you now and uh yeah and the king you turns to you. You can do it, Ashwin. I believe in you. He rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no insight check needed. Austerin does not give a shit. Listen here, you little thing. <laughs> You're the same height. Or maybe... Or maybe Austerin's a little short. Listen, you're both, you're both short. Austerin's tiny. Uh... You're both short. <laughs> you're shorter than me. Austerin's like this big. Austerin is one foot six inches. Oh, what? Tiny. He's gotten bigger? No, that's no, how that's, big he was. That's how big he I was. was. 
Yeah, foot and a half. So he's this big. So, this big. I'm not even that much taller than you. You both uh, sure get in there. Oh, only one participant in this duel. Ashwin. What is uh, your okay. worry? If uh, if I say no, what happens? You lose a lot of respect. Well, I From will consider who? taking away that sword. I'll tell you that much. I'll take it. Why, why did it take... It's not your sword. It if, soon could if be. If you're not worthy of that sword, the king says to you, there's no reason for you to wield it. I mean, I gotta protect these dummies. So no one asks for your protection. Do I have to threaten their lives to get you to fight? Oh, uh... Uh, I mean, I just met these two. I don't know. <laughs> what is your say? Will you, you know of the consequences? Will you duel or not? I'm fine, I'll duel. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Show them it's barbecue time. And the king, the king makes that like understated laugh and then starts chortling and uh claps his little mouthful hands and people clear out of the the uh, lower floor area where the stairs lead up to the throne and you realize now that that area with the sawdust and everything is also used as a fighting pit so there are four uh columns as i described in the pit but other than that that's about it and Burrowface steps forward to you, Ashwin, and says, Don't worry, young mouse folk. We will have fun in this duel, and uh, we have great healers here that can put us right. I do want to see that sword, that relic in action. And then he walks off to the opposite side of the, of the uh, fighting pit. Oh great! Drums can I, start playing. Uh, can I can I give her inspiration before she starts? Sure. Is that Game of Thrones? Yes. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that, but copyright issue. Uh, um, <laughs> it's so... more tied to the last season. You have you have one inspiration. Is that a D eight or a D ten? That is a no this D eight. Okay. So you can use that on any attack ability check or saving throw. Okay. You're welcome. Oh thanks. And the <laughs> the have. king uh I assume you take a spot opposite of Burrowface. Yeah, uh, uh, right before like it happens, like I turn my back one more time to the gang. Like, guys, I, uh, I don't think I should be doing this. Get in there, champ. But we believe in you. He rolls his eyes again. But like, uh, <laughs> uh, I never told you guys. Like, I I suck at like pretty much everything you can think of. Like, this is like the only thing that I'm okay at. Right. So you should do great. <laughs> Get in there and, and show them. Show them what barbecue time looks like. It'll be well, fine. That's like a lot of pressure now. Just, just <laughs> light up the sword, start fighting with it. It'll be close your eyes. You'll be fine. Picture everyone naked, all the mice, especially the king. There you go. And like most mice, we just are in our fur. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay. Know, it looks, like looks like everyone's clothed around me. <laughs> Uh, All right. The king announces limited use of magic is allowed during the duel only by its participants. Uh, other than that, there will be no killing blows and any requests to, to surrender will be granted without question. Can I have... Uh, one more request. Yes, young Ashwin. 
Uh, can I be healed up? So, like, I'm going at my fullest of strength. You should have been healed anyways. Did I you... was gonna say, we just had a long rest. Oh, Multiple. my bad. Yeah, on I your D&D &D never... Beyond um, page, if you click that uh, long rest button at the top, that should fix you. You have to, like, click it and then say yes to a long rest and then Got confirm it. it. There's a lot of hoops. Never mind. Uh, I'm just trying to stall here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the king turns to uh, one of his advisors and says, I think our mouse folk brethren on the material have gotten soft. And uh, he announces, begin the match. Roll initiative. Shit. Dun, dun, dun. You can do it, Ashwin. <laughs> this is like um, uh, when the genie is controlled by Jafar in Aladdin, and <laughs> he's doing the cheerleading, the half-hearted cheerleading. That's exactly what it it reminds me of. Jafar, uh, Jafar, see. he's not. He's yeah, our man. Yeah. He can't do it. Great. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Cheer. Uh, I got a 21. 21. 21. Okay, you go first, Ashwin. All right. You're 25 uh, feet away. Oh, sh eh. <laughs> Yay. All right. So I uh, awkwardly draw the sword. It's a bit shaky, but she still has like a firm grass on the ground at least she's like ah, you asked for this and then she goes it's barbecue time and people around you you hear them go whoa i mean sword all right yeah i uh move in <laughs> to slash okay you and sprint sword. in almost half-heartedly or are you like committed to this fight now She's committed. Okay. She just like nah. Roll uh, for again. damage and attacking. I mean. Yeah. Uh, where do you go? Twenty. So it's twenty-one. Did that hit? Uh, yes, it does. Sweet. What are you guys doing while this fight is going on? Anything interesting? Or are you just watching? Just watching. Just watching. Okay. Um. Actually, does a star know anyone from uh, the Mouse King Sport? Like, would he know? Like, you haven't been another... here very often. You've seen the king before, but you haven't been inside the court. You haven't been sent as a messenger uh, here, but you've seen okay. the king before. So, yeah. Alrighty. So that was uh, 16 fire damage. Okay. On the first attack? Yeah. Going for that second blow. Ooh, okay. And that was a 25. Yeah. Uh, legit uh, 16 again. Okay. And with two quick strikes... Uh, Burrowface staggers back and uh, is shocked at the fire damage you have inflicted upon him and the crowd is equally shocked uh, but he pulls out his short sword and scimitar wielding them both in his hands and he goes to attack you here it comes The scimitar, that is a 24 to hit. That hits. And a 19 to hit with the short sword. They both hit. Okay. Can I cutting words <laughs> from where I am? You heard the king. Just want to remind you, you heard the king. Uh... But cutting words isn't magic. It's just me yelling out an insult. 
sure. You could if if yeah. if like I'm telling you, um, it's possible you might get away with it, but it's also possible that they've seen bards do shit like that before, and they just saw you inspire her. So, um, it's up to Fine. you. Fine, you're on your own, Ashby. <laughs> I mean, you could try. Yeah, you can try. <laughs> You've been nothing but um, sassy to all of us. Maybe you're doing it to me. Sassy but helpful, you ungrateful whores. <laughs> <laughs> Are we shouting on the battlefield? <laughs> A 19, uh, 19 total damage there. Ashwin. Okay. And... Burrow face is going to. He's going to make a disarming attack on you because he doesn't want to get hit by that. All right. So. Um. He makes a disarming attack with the scimitar, and that is um, add two more points of damage. All right. And then make a strength saving throw. Fifteen. Uh, uh, that does not save. Your sword flies out of your hand, and I assume it loses its fire once it yeah. leaves your hand. Um, Can I like cast Mage Hand behind, like, like do the spell Mage Hand and try and like catch it from going away, but like well, hide not... the fact that I'm doing it? Yeah, it's it's not flying far. It's like maybe five to ten feet away. Like try and like nudge it closer so she can grab it. Make quickly. a sleight of hand check. Uh, where are my skills at? Those things that are important. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, that's a 30. What? Uh, Rogues, baby. I will make one roll for their clerics who barely come close to... They, they alone have the chance to see this shit, but it's going to be a disadvantage, so... Okay. Yeah, you you nudge it closer and um it's it's within five feet for sure now. Uh Wait. you think she could probably get to it without disengaging from from uh Burrow face. Perfect. Uh, Alright. So it's your turn now. Yay. Uh okay, so yeah. I go uh to try to pick it up. And Brian, is that a bonus action to pick up or uh, free Half... action actually? Free action, okay. You oh can sweet. Pick up, pick so up one pick thing up. as your free action. Yep. All right, so I picked it up. It's barbecue time. Bonus action, <laughs> barbecue time. Yep. Okay. And let's try it again. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the first time I I missed. Okay. Real bad. I whiffed. Did you want to use your inspiration for that? No, not yet. Okay. So, uh, Burrow Face is going to use his reaction to repost on your miss with a superiority die. Okay. And... So, how about, does an 18 work? 18 hits, uh, does... A 20 hit you on his repost. Yes. Okay. Uh, Take 16 uh, slashing damage from Jesus. the repost. What's the second one's damage to Burrow Face? Uh, uh, 13 damage. 
Uh, and I'm going to uh, action surge. Okay. Because I don't like to lose. <laughs> so I'll try it all over again. A nat 20. Nice. Whew. Critical. Does something happen when I do that? Yeah, you double your your damage dice, not your uh, modifiers. So okay. roll your normal damage dice or roll... <laughs> yeah. The dice gods are on my side, so I just uh, got both six on that. Okay. So that's 12. And you said double that? Then double, so 24. 24, and then I still add a six to it. So... And yeah. And it's a longsword, right? It's no, a, it's, it's a scimitar. A uh, it's a scimitar. Okay, it's a so, flame tongue, though, right? Yeah. So yeah. 30. So there's another there's another d6 of slashing damage to roll too. You do the swords damage plus two d6 fire did. damage. I think she did. Yeah, yeah, I did that one. Oh, I thought you I thought you said you just rolled two d6. I missed it. Sorry. You're good. So yeah, so that is thirty yeah. fire damage. In a matter of a few seconds, uh, Burrowface looks very rough and singed and burny and swaying uh but he's still up and All right, i have uh, one more then yep Ooh. 22 yeah uh, 16 damage He's on death's door, but he's still swaying. Uh, Are you okay? I'm fine. I don't know why you were slow playing this battle. You're doing fine. Uh, we'll use... Where is it? Second wind. And... Pretty quickly, you you know what this is. This is second wind, uh, adrenaline surges through Burrowface's body, and the blood loss that he was experiencing is is momentary momentarily slowed or perhaps permanently, and he will take his attack. Uh. A 16 on the first one. Oh my god. Oh, I should have healed. Does that hit? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, a 19 on the second one. Okay. Yep, they both hit. That's 12 points of piercing and slashing damage from the scimitar and short sword. And... Um, it is going to make another, uh, no, it's going to make a menacing attack on you. Okay. And add another eight damage and make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Oh man! I don't know how that went. What's your wisdom save? Uh... So roll a d20 and then add. Yeah. Your... Okay. I got a 20. Not a nat 20, but a 20. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, Burrowface clearly tries to intimidate you and frighten you, but you uh, are not persuaded to be frightened. Um, on D&D Beyond, I have this little A thingy, and it says, I don't know what that is. It's a green A. Advantage. Oh. Okay, that's what it is. Because it just says I have that on um, being frightened. Yeah, so you don't need it. Uh, but that would have granted you another uh, d20 roll on that. Um, All right, cool. So uh, 
and gets another attack, which I neglected to do last time. Good. And that's an 18 on a 12 on the die. That both hits. Mm -hmm. Ash one is looking pretty beat up, too. That is 21 slashing and piercing. I'm down. And with that, Ashwin collapses, and Burrowface, looking pretty darn rough, steps back, and uh, clerics rush forward and heal you uh, back to full. Uh, the clerics are dressed in similar garb, similar material garb to the king, except they all have ridiculously tall collars that go above their mouse heads, and just a little, like, open slit uh, in front of their snouts. Um, but they heal you and Burrow Face up back to full, and the king and everyone in the court start clapping and cheering, and the king says, Well done, young Ashwin. You certainly are wor worthy of carrying that great weapon. I don't know why you were worried about f fighting. That was amazing. I thought you had Burrow Face. Burrow Face says, I thought she had me too. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure I just go, <gasps> because, yeah, you put me down at zero. Yeah, you were unconscious, and then the, the clerics of the king brought you back up, so you're at full health now. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure she's still like, what the f just happened? Yeah, you went well, with from... new rules. She's a little tired. Isn't yeah, it? you are a little exhausted. <laughs> So mark on your notes or somewhere that you have one level of exhaustion. Got it. Each point of exhaustion goes away after a long rest. By the way, okay. Liam, because going unconscious is kind of... There's not a lot of, lot of um, penalty to it in 5e. Uh, each time you go unconscious and then you're brought back up, you gain a level of exhaustion unless it's taken away by greater restoration or some other means. Sounds uh, great. So if you go down twice in a day, uh, you'll have two levels of exhaustion uh, and so on and so forth. <coughs> but, um, yeah, the king is quite happy with, with uh, your showing and uh, is asking you why you were so reluctant to uh to fight because uh, i'm not like the best uh where i'm from so like i don't want to uh be ashamed of that i guess i don't want to make where we come from like seem like we're lame we can't do anything you're not the best not even close when was the last time your your tribe, your, I don't know what you call yourself on the material, when was the last time y'all figured out who was the best? Because that was amazing. Uh, it's, pro it's just probably my friend Ronaldo. Stupid Ronaldo. <laughs> uh, it's probably him. The king says, "Well, I'd like to see you fight him because." Uh... Oh, don't don't worry. We fight like all the time. And Burrowface steps up to the king and whispers something in uh, his ear, and says, uh, "Young Ashwin, Burrowface and I quite agree. Burrowface has suggested that I offer you a chance to." train with him uh, if you like, and maybe you can teach each other some of your moves. Uh, hey, hey, Burrow Face? You're not gonna, like, kill me again, are you? No, of course not. I was just... Some of those... Some of those maneuvers I was doing I could possibly teach you. I don't know how good of a student you are. You just seem to fight on talent alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been told that a lot. I'm pretty stupid, so I kind of forget to do things. I did not say you were stupid. I would not say that of any mouse folk. But okay. if you would like 
you can spend a week training and basically what that translates to if you wanted to spend a week now or later anytime really it would translate you getting into you getting a uh battle master uh superiority die which means you can use one you would get two maneuvers you could learn in that week and it's probably a little fast in learning those, but whatever. It's fine. You would pick two maneuvers out of the Battle Master maneuver set that you could do and use a superiority die if you trained for a week. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll take you up on your offer. Like, can I, like, find a bed? I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, the king shows you all to you can have a massive room that you share or you can have your own room all to yourself if you like we'll take one bed please i'll take my own room thanks i, I say that in squeak room. squeak we'll take one bed one one room to me Prodi says to you guys who aren't agreeing to sleep in the same room you guys realize that's rude right to who and then uh that's where we'll leave it for the week. Thanks, guys. Yay. We knew you could do it, Ashton. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you got close. <laughs> I knew I couldn't do it. You came within three points of, of ending it. Are you kidding me? I kid Amazing. you not. I knew I should have healed. You didn't have your bonus action, though, because um, you used it to you, light you your... You had to relight it. Light your sword. Yeah. Which you need for second wind, your bonus action. But uh, that is neither here nor there. You came close and you did well. So maybe Ashwin will gain some confidence in her abilities. Damn we'll Ronaldo. We'll see next time for episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 40. Uh, which will be next week, most likely. And uh, thank you for joining us. Let's go around the table and plug anything you like to plug, any socials, whatnot, Liam. Oh, it always starts with me. Uh, hi, I'm Liam Neary. You can find me on Instagram at the Liam Neary. Uh, on top of this, episodes 9, 10, 11, and 12 of Enter the Hex that you can find on YouTube are getting dropped this week, which I am participating in. It's another D&D &D show with a little bit of like game show kind of uh, activities as well. Like yep. Plinko? No. Oh. The like, like it's it, they're too hard to explain. Some of them are like too crazy to explain. Fair you enough. You just have to watch. Fair enough. And uh Lex. Uh hey guys, you can find me on Instagram at Twitter, uh at it's Lex the Chameleon. On Tuesday nights you could find me playing Misha, uh, the acting duchess um in a game called blank slate you can find that on scabby rooster uh slash twitch tv or whatever the thing is um you can find me at twin mask as a, a lot of things mostly a goblin named klish uh what else uh, i'll be going to dr soon dr norcal so you can find me there being a fish dominican republic norcal That's yes for yes. those non-LARPers, that's what that means. Uh, mm -hmm. That's my first thought that came through my head. Cool. Anything uh, else? Uh, Not that there should that's be. That's it. That's it. That's but, it. I would think I'm good. By the way, you almost beat a level 10 Battlemaster fighter. Oh, so that's another, in the face. another point in your court. Kyle. Hi everyone, my name's Kyle. I play Sassy Pants, a star in Whisker Wings. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at it's Ridikyle, I T S R I D I Kyle. I also play Twin Mask with two lovely people here. I play Kaylin, uh, Port Frey's resident Disney princess, and I also am joining Dystopia Rising NorCal, where I will be also playing another Disney princess who is a fish. So cool. find me there. Ariel, Ariel. Cool. Ariel yeah. Now we know what DR stands for. Yes. Brian. Mm -hmm. I'm Brian. Nothing to plug. 
no socials to speak of. I'm just here to play D and D. He lies. He's huge on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Huge. Big, <laughs> huge. Big. It's not even true. I don't even have a LinkedIn. And Neither a do I. I can't. I, that's I seriously funny. should in my career. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've never had one. I just can't understand its interface. Anyways, I'm Jake Friday. You can find me on Twitter at Jake Friday or Instagram at Jake of the Friday. Uh, if you need DMing services in the LA area, you can find my website, Jake friday.com and there's information there uh join us again next week wednesday 7 p.m pacific episode 40 we'll see what happens maybe they'll find the teeth maybe they won't maybe they'll train maybe brian slash crispy will lose his mind again we'll find out probably likely i mean if we have to hang out in the Feywild for an entire week while she trains, there's like a really high chance that I'm going to go manic all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, without <laughs> further delay, be excellent to others and be excellent to yourself. Give yourself a break every once in a while and have a good one. We'll see you next week. Bye! Bye.